introduction and Mark Hudson, the senior organiser for you at the Union in the North East Yorkshire and other region. I'm joined by my fellow organisers, John Wood, Simon Clark, Dominic Rowling, and we've also got Andy Fuller, regional officer for your night president, and Arya Eisner, the regional coordinator for the other side region. I'd like to thank you all for coming today and showing your support to us campaign. Um, there will be opportunity for people to speak after we've obviously gone through the introductions and the purpose of today. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'll just crack on. So we're here today to call upon our politicians to support the Unite-led campaign to support the UK steel industry. A campaign that incorporates steel communities, local businesses, sports, social and community clubs and of course both current and ex-steel workers. We call upon politicians to ensure that the UK has a strong steel industry. We have seen decline after decline for the past 40 years but the reality is that it no longer has to be that way. This industry, their communities and local businesses are now calling on politicians to give them the opportunity that they deserve through the transition that's there for green steel production. With the right investment to meet that demand for the green steel, we can ensure that not only the protection for steel workers and its supply chain, we can ensure that there is opportunities for generations to come. This will allow Britain to become a world leader in steel production again. Currently, it falls behind the likes of Austria and Poland and a steel plant in Germany alone <coughs> produces more steel than the UK in its entirety. <coughs> so Unite's campaign has seen community, uh, sorry, community events held throughout these steel communities. We've had over a thousand Support UK steel boards displayed within uh, outsole gardens to show the level of support that the local residents have got for the, for the industry. We've got local businesses displaying Support UK steel posters. We've had billboard advertisements and now we've got a petition that's had over 30,000 signatures all in support of us campaigns. So what is it that unites after? Well, the plan for steel well, we're basing around five pledges. Expanding steel working, steel making capacity by at least double. This will take us back towards the European average while introducing new, new technology and increasing jobs. Second point is to tackle energy prices. Bringing electric, electricity price caps and public ownership of the grid to make our steel even more competitive. The further is to change procurement rules to ensure UK public contracts use UK steel. This alone would create thousands of jobs. Fourth, it's to take a public stake in our steel industry. No more money for nothing. Public investment for steel must come with solid job guarantees. It can't be a case where we see a £500 million pledge by the Tory party, which at the same time allows Tart to announce 2,800 job cuts. And the fifth one is for us to have public investment of £12 billion. This will fund a workers' transition that doubles capacity and protects every job. It will pay for itself in as little as 10 years. That's basically our plan and we're asking you to support that plan and do everything you can to give these com this community and these steel workers the opportunity that they all thrive for. Thank you. Before we get over our petition today, I'd like to ask a few people to come forward and say a few words on behalf of this campaign. First of all, I'd like to... Uh, call on Martin Foster. Martin's Unites convener at Scunthorpe Steelworks. So thank you, Martin. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, that's the noise for doing this. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to speak, but still. Look, it's, it's, the support that's been shown for the steel industry in Scunthorpe has been outstanding. 
Uh, we, we've been through this, I don't know how many times, over the last 15 years, since 2008. Uh, but, but this time has a very different feel to it and we can tell from the public's response that they, they realise that this is a different situation to what we've been in before. Now there's two, there's two sides to the British Steel story. The, the plan is to introduce electric air furnaces in Scunthorpe and in Teesside. Now for Teesside, that's a good story. That's a brilliant story, that's an increase in jobs, that's an increase in capacity. For Scunthorpe, not so much. The introduction of a new electric car furnace in Scunthorpe means 2,000 job cuts. Uh, and that's not a pie in the sky figure, we've had that figure confirmed by the company. So that, that's 2,000 waste packets that will not be spent in this, this surrounding town. This, that's, that's all these businesses that will suffer as a result. Yes, there's a plan to, to develop 300 acres of the Scunthorpe site. But those won't be filled with the same well paid jobs that we currently have in the steel industry. So even then, there will still be an impact on the local economy and the local community. And I think the community in Scunthorpe get that and they understand that. And they've been supporting us every, every step of the way. So I take my hat off to the, to the community in Scunthorpe and I thank them from the bottom of my heart for all the support that we've had. And also from Nick, Nick Dakin, who's, who's been a fantastic support of the steel industry for many years now. Uh, Judy and all the other Labour councillors who, who've, who've supported us. It's been absolutely fantastic. I can't say thank you enough to you. Um, I just hope that at the end of it all, we still have a thriving steel industry in Scunthorpe with, with plenty of well paid jobs left behind for the next generation to come. Thank you. Um, let's call forward Judith, if that's okay. Our Labour councillor, and I'd like to take this opportunity particularly to thank Judith and Max for all they've done because they've been instrumental and been a part of our campaign from the offset. So thanks ever so much. I'd just like to say, steel is so important. It is embedded in our community and we can't lose it. And our heart goes out, myself, Max and the other Labour councillors, of all these job losses. We've got to keep fighting, we've got to fight for our residents, we've got to fight for Scunthorpe. We've seen how, how much we have got the backing of everybody all around the UK. Just last week I was in Parliament and people there were saying Scunthorpe needs steel and I will keep fighting as long as my colleagues will also keep fighting with us. We can't lose these jobs. I've seen these unite, everybody from Unite. This is so passionate for them, for us and all the workers. We've got to do this for the other generations that are coming. We need good paid jobs. This art is not what people think. We're going to lose jobs, we cannot afford to lose jobs. Our town will become a ghost town. There's a knock on effect with other jobs. We've seen the local businesses, these amazing murals, the support. We all need to keep fighting. And we need to we need to get this sorted. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. I'd also like to welcome Malcolm Boatman. Malcolm has been also instrumental in this campaign. He's a resident of Scunthorpe and he wants to come forward and say a few words as well. We're relatively new to Scunthorpe, we've only lived here for just under two years um, and I'm a, I'm a retired member of Unite but looking at the town centre as it is at the moment you can see how things are bad at the moment. Can you imagine how that's going to be if we lose the predicted amount of jobs that we're going to get from the steel? I mean we've all seen, it's 40 years on from when we had the miners strike and we've all seen what that did to communities. And some of them are still struggling even today to, to get back to where they was. And I don't want that for Scunthorpe. This is, this is now my new town. I'm living here, I'm a resident, and I want this town to thrive. And I can't see that happening if the plans for the steelworks go ahead. So we need to get behind it. And finally, I'd like to welcome Nick Dakin. Labour's parliamentary prospective candidate for the next general election. Thank you, well, thank you very much. Um, it's difficult following such good speakers, isn't it? They've more or less covered everything. Um, uh, but it does show the passion 
for the steel industry and this steel town, this steel community. You hear it from people from um, all, all walks of life there. Um, and I'd like to start by thanking Unite for the campaign they've been um, in terms of drawing attention to this issue uh, consistently through a, an attractive, vibrant campaign. Um, the reality is that, uh, you know, as we stand here today, Port Talbot, our sister uh, community in South Wales, is grappling with the loss of 2,800 jobs. Um, the trade union movement there working uh, to try and mitigate those circumstances as much as they possibly can. But Port Talbot, are ahead in this journey of, of challenge that we face and frankly we've got a general election coming up and as I'm saying to people on doorsteps around Scunthorpe um, and Curtin and Bottisford and all the areas around here I'm saying there's a real choice there's a real choice at the next general election for people locally and nationally about the sort of steel industry they want do they want a steel industry which is just dealing with recycled steel through electric arts? Because that's the steel industry that at the moment uh, the Conservative government is committed to. It's a steel industry which Tata is already going down the road of and which GEA is following up on. Do they want to just reduce to uh, a, a recycled future for steel so that we're dependent on the iron making coming, the virgin steel making coming from outside of this country. And remember what the U Ukraine war should tell us something about our security, because steel is at the heart of our defense security, of our infrastructure security, our rail, our buildings. And we shouldn't offshore that security. So there's, a, so there's an issue there. Do we want to go down this narrow, recycled future with the loss of around 5,000 jobs? in the UK steel industry? Or do we want to go with Labour's vision? Labour is committed to a three billion pound investment in steel, public investment. It's not quite what United, and, and we, we, you know, you need to ask. You always need to ask for more than you might get because you need to stretch the ask, don't you? But Labour is committed, even after Rachel and Keir have, have looked at all the figures, that that commitment of three billion pound investment in decarbonising the steel industry so that we retain our virgin steel making capacity and we can make primary steel products is there in Labour's manifesto. Three billion pounds, that means yes we need electric arts, that, that is part of the decarbonised future, but secondly we need to retain our blast furnaces, at least in the short to medium term so we can produce our virgin steel making through our blast furnaces and in the longer term medium to longer term, we're probably looking at direct reduced iron, which can be done through hydrogen, um, which is obviously a, a green technology, so that we would retain our virgin steel making capacity here, retain our defence and infrastructure security in our own hands, not outsource them to people outside of the UK. So this is a very important campaign that Unite is doing. There's a very important decision coming up for the British people. We as a Labour movement, and you would expect me to say this, wouldn't you? As a Labour movement, we need to work together on this. So we need the three steel unions, Unite, Community and the GMB, working together to maximise their strength. And we need them to work together with the political arm of the trade union movement, which is the Labour Party. If we do that, we are stronger together and we can win the future we all want for our steel industry and our steel communities. Thank you, comrades. You and Judy have come forward. Judy Court as well, Martin. Yeah. <coughs> On behalf of BNI, <coughs> local communities and businesses alike, we'd like to and this petition over to you as a strength of feeling to the need to support the UK steel industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.